Thank you very much. Shall we swing a little bit? Bye, honey. Bye, not so close. <laughs> Bye, honey. This, uh, this guy right here, right, right here. That's Jacob, Jacob LaMondola. Jacob's a filmmaker. Remember how I said I was doing a long form project and that's why I haven't been posting videos? Okay, that long form movie that I'm making, Jacob is helping me edit it. I'm working on it though. Going well? Things are good. Okay. Okay. I... Mm, I have a problem. Uh, it's serious. No, this is not a joke. I have a bona fide, like proper, no sarcasm, but proper addiction to social media. And let me just qualify what that means. Uh, I use the word addiction, by the way, very lightly. Um, I have friends who have struggled with chemical addictions. It's not that. Uh, maybe a better, maybe a, a better descriptor for it would be to call it a destructive habit, because it has a negative impact on my life. Okay, but what it looks like is this. I can't have a conversation, I can't sit through a movie, I can't hang out in real life with friends, I can't make it through dinner, I can't make it through a conversation, I can't drive my car more than a couple of blocks, very dangerous, without thumbing through social media. And this isn't some like thing that I justify as like it's for work or I need to know it's going on. This is mindless scrolling. This is that thing you do on Twitter, that thing you do on Instagram. There's nothing behind it. There's no benefit, there's no upside. Just scrolling. I carry two phones, two phones at all times, all day, every day. I carry an iPhone and then whatever the latest and greatest uh, Android phone is. And if you've ever met me, like most people, this is what it looks like. I average 59 minutes, that's one hour a day on Instagram, 47 minutes a day on Twitter. That's an hour and 46 minutes a day just between Twitter and Instagram. A significant amount of my day is spent on that mindless scrolling. And that's just like the time part. That's just the part, that's just how much of my life I lose when it comes to time. Forget about like the health implications of it. You know, I'm not a super insecure guy, but when I'm thumbing through Instagram, like, it's almost an involuntary human emotion or human reaction to be comparing yourself or your life with other people's lives. And then like I'm not a particularly politically active person but when I'm thumbing through Twitter I follow a lot of news outlets and like I see that Donald Trump called Tim Cook Tim Apple which is funny and I laugh at it and then I scroll down and like somebody on this side is mad at Trump for saying that and somebody on this side is saying no it's just a joke and then there's this arguing and then I'm getting stressed out over something that I, I it has no bearing on my life and I, I I, I think I like justify it as uh, with the Twitter thing like I need to know what's going on It's a healthy thing to know what's going on No one needs to know what's going on in that level and Instagram I can similarly justify it as like this is just fun It's a great way to pass time, but the reality is an hour a day looking at pictures like there's there's just no way that that's making me a better person or a better father or a better anything that's just like burning time looking at other people's lives like what is that doing to our brains and then that that what is it doing to our brains bit i think is well nobody knows see social media is not that old it's like whatever 10 15 years old and then having these super powerful smartphones in our pocket that give us unfettered access to social media that's new it hasn't been around long enough for anybody to actually know what the impact like the long-term impact of it is Little story. When Georgina was born, Georgina's my little baby girl, not my, not my four-year-old, but the little one. When she was born, I, um, I don't know. I like told myself I wanted a week where it was just me appreciating the fact that I had this new beautiful baby daughter. I didn't put on any social media because I wanted to make sure that I was appreciating, you know, having a, a, a new daughter. Not that I was seeking anybody's approval because of likes or retweets or anything like that. So I took a week, seven full days without checking Twitter once, without checking Instagram once. And I, I mean, it's hard to articulate the impact it had on me, but it was like, like I wasn't happier, 
but it did feel like almost a burden was lifted off of me, like a weight, like a heavy blanket that I shoulder every day. It wasn't there. It's like my brain could focus on fewer things. My brain had to focus on fewer things. So I could appreciate like the things that are amazing about life instead of thinking about all of this noise that is consuming 59 minutes or 47 minutes or whatever it is of Twitter a day. All right, so I, I did a little research. Whenever I say I do research, that means I just Googled it. But I, I did a little research and Kevin Roos, and it's in the New York Times. And the title of the article is, Do Not Disturb, How I Ditched My Phone and Unbroke My Brain. D tell me how familiar this sounds. I found myself incapable of reading books, watching full-length movies, or having long, uninterrupted conversations. Social media made me angry and anxious. Hmm? Okay, another really fascinating article. It's called, The NBA's Happiness Crisis. And it's about how a lot of NBA stars feel isolated. I mean, these are like the best athletes in the world that are very well paid how they're feeling isolated and they have a kind of anxiety that professional athletes didn't used to have. It ends with this, the bottom line, rampant social media usage is a problem that extends far beyond sports and examining the impact it's having on professional athletes really opens your eyes to the magnitude of the problem. Okay, so here's what I'm gonna do. Here's my, this is a short term solution, but here's what I'm gonna do. I am officially deleting Twitter and Instagram off of both of my phones. I'm keeping my accounts. And by not having it on my phones, it means I'm not gonna be able to check it all day long. If there's something I need to read about, something I wanna share, I'll write it down in my notes app. I'll take a picture and leave it on my phone. When I get home later, I'll share it if it, I deem it worthy. But from now on, or at least uh, until I can't stand it anymore, I'm only gonna be checking social media when I sit down at home in front of my laptop. I spend far less time a day in front of my laptop than I do with, with one of these two devices in my hands. I feel like there was a point in my life when I was very good at packing light, and then I've gotten away from that, and now I, I don't know how to pack light anymore. Hello, Daddy. Brandy, I'm in here. Look, my grants have started to grow. Oh my goodness. Franny, can you help Daddy pack all my stuff up? Francini, I don't think you're gonna be able to come on this trip, honey. Bye. Bye, Bye girls. Bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, -bye. Bye, girls. Uh, JFK Terminal Five. Thank you. Thank you very much. Shall we swing a little bit? Back at the airport again. So it's now. Uh, it's now. 8.30, which means it's been five hours since I deleted the apps from my phone. I feel good. I still catch myself checking the phone like every 20 seconds, but then there's nothing on there to look at, so I put it back in my pocket. I'm so far so good. <laughs> 